Hello and welcome back to another lecture uh, for, for pre-calculus. Today we're going to be talking about uh, the unit circle. Uh, it's a topic that um, is very prevalent in mathematics, and something that you study a bit in high school in terms of something called trigonometry. So we'll start today with the basics and something called the unit circle, which is just a circle centered at the origin with radius 1. Um, after we talk about just some definitions of things today, we'll look into uh, computing some things uh, on the unit circle, things like reference numbers or reference angles, for example, or we'll look at terminal points, for example. Um, but this is going to be a topic that we're going to be on for a while here. All of chapter 5 is on trigonometry and the unit circle. And even after this, when we get into chapter 6 already again, uh, we're going to have more of this unit circle stuff, more of this trigonometry stuff. Um, but we're going to sort of switch gears at that point and look at it from a right triangle perspective. Uh, so there's, there's really two ways to approach trigonometry, and one of them is with the unit circle, and one of them is with right triangles. We're going to hit them both in this class. So uh, some of the stuff we're going to talk about today, and you'll get some understanding of. And uh, then we'll work on some more advanced topics like trigonometric functions here in a few days or weeks. And then if it wasn't all making sense by then, we're going to revisit these topics from a different direction. And maybe that'll clear some things up. Maybe it won't. Um, my hope is you'll get it after this first time, because this, this, is, this is a sufficient way to understand it. Um, but if not, go ahead and ask questions and, uh, and what have you. I'm here to help. Um, so as you can see from the schedule, tomorrow on the 6th of April, there's no classes. And there's no office hours either. So if you're planning on coming to office hours April 6th tomorrow, uh, you, you can't. I won't be here. It's, it's, it's the world table tennis day, so I'm book solid. I can't, I can't do anything. No, remember, this was the U Albany's uh, replacement for spring break. They inserted two mental well-being days. Uh, one of them was earlier on in the semester on a Wednesday. The next one is April 6th. So I will not be having office hours. But my email is still open. So if you have questions on Tuesday, you can still send me an email, and I'll get back to you either Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, I slash my wife still hasn't decided if I'm working that day. So we will see what happens. Um, I might get back to you on Wednesday, depending on what the boss says. So here we go. The unit circle, 5.1. Let me switch over to this. And we'll go ahead and get started. So the unit circle is just a circle. Um, and if you took a radius of it, uh, it the radius would just be 1, uh, i.e. unit. It's of unit radius. So that's what that word means, right? If you have a unit of measure, that's one of those things you're measuring. So one dollar, that's a unit of measure. One penny, it's another unit of measure, but it's a hundredth of the other unit. So that gives you an idea that when we're talking about the unit circle, it doesn't matter what what units we're working in. It can be one kilometer, or it can be one centimeter. It doesn't matter what length it is, so long as we, we have it scaled to just be one of a unit, okay? Um, so. In, in application problems, it doesn't really matter what the unit is, so long as it has one as the radius. Um, it has center zero, zero. So the point in the very middle is zero, zero. And um, it has the equation, something that we know. I'm going to have to write this. It's something that we know from our previous studies. It has equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. We learned about the center form, I suppose. The standard form for the equation of a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals the radius squared. But if our radius is 1, it's just equal to 1. And if our center is 0, 0, if h and k are both 0, then it's just x squared plus y squared. Okay? So it's not too difficult to verify that a given point is or is not on the circle. 
right? If I if I just gave you some some random point, like oh let's look at this, a really easy one, one one. It's really easy to verify that this is, or to refute that this is on the unit circle. All you have to do is make sure that it it satisfies this equation. So does this point satisfy the equation? The answer is no. If we take one and square it, and add that to one squared, what, what do we get? We get two. That's not one. So this is this point is not on the unit circle. In fact, it's it's like right here. Okay, if this is zero zero right there at the center, then we go right one, and we go up one, and there we have it. Okay. Now it's that's an easy one to see, but what about something else? What about <clears throat> what about something like this? Root three over two and one half. You know what? Let's make it negative one half. Let's make it a little more interesting. Is that on the unit circle? Well, we just need to again verify or refute that this equation is satisfied with these two points, x and y being the coordinates of. So we've got x squared, which is root 3 over 2, squared, plus y, which is one, negative 1 half, squared. Well, that we remember our rules of powers. This is just the square root of 3 squared, so that's 3, over 2 squared, which is 4, plus negative 1 squared, which is 1, over 2 squared, which is 4, and 3 fourths over, or 3 fourths plus 1 fourth is obviously 4 fourths, so that's 1. That's exactly that. So this, this point, root 3 over 2, comma negative 1 half, which is right about here, I would say, on the unit circle, it, it, it is a point on the unit circle. So if I give you any point, how you can confirm or refute that that point is on the unit circle is just plug in the x and y coordinates into this into this left side and see if you get one. If you get one, it's on the circle. If not, it's not on the circle. Okay. Um, so that brings me to a small discussion of where points are positive and negative on the unit circle. So let me divide this up using some axes. So here we'll have our x-axis, and here we'll have our y-axis. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this in terms of um, sort of like a coordinate idea. So I'm gonna take a point over here, I'm gonna write like coordinates, x and y, but instead of writing a number, I'm gonna write a sign, right? So a plus, plus or negative. So if I take any point in this first quadrant, remember this is quadrant one, the x coordinate is gonna be something like this, and that's a positive number. The y coordinate is gonna be something like this, and that's also gonna be positive. So any point actually, no matter where I place this, is gonna have a positive x and a positive y. All of those points have them like that. <laughs> How many things do I have to erase to remove the point? There we go, positive and positive. What about in quadrant two? In quadrant two, the x coordinate is negative and the y coordinate is positive, right? We're above the x axis, so y coordinate's positive, but we're to the left of the y axis, so we've got a negative x component there. In quadrant three, both are negative. We're to the left of the y axis and below the x axis, so we've got two negative values there. And in quadrant four, x is positive and y is negative. Okay, so <clears throat> this gives us sort of an idea of if we were given a point and you verified that it was on the unit circle by 
computing x squared plus y squared, and you got one. This gives you an idea of where it is on the unit circle just based on the signs. For example, the point that I gave earlier, root 3 over 2, which we determined was on the unit circle, with a y coordinate negative 1 half. We verified it's on the unit circle, and because it has a positive x coordinate and a negative x coordinate, I know it's in quadrant 4. Okay, just, just without even thinking, it's, it's down here somewhere. Okay, you could you know, plot it precisely, but in, generally speaking, you just look at the signs and you know which quadrant it's in. That's going to come in handy here in a little bit. So now let's talk about something that uh, I know you're familiar with. Um, let's take let's take something like a number. Your book likes to use the number t. Let's let t. Be some number, and it will be uh, essentially a length of an arc. Okay, so if I took a number t and I traced out, starting right here, and traced out that length t, I'd arrive here at this point. Okay, now t is a distance, but commonly this is, this here is known as an angle. So there's, there's two ways to think about angles, and the way that we're going to hear about it here is we're going to hear about it not in terms of degrees, we're going to hear about it in terms of this arc length. Okay, we're gonna try and learn it this way in a, in a unit called a radian, and then we're gonna we're gonna switch to uh, we're gonna learn also about degrees here in a bit. So before I get into a lot of that, I want to just get at some vocabulary here first. So t is an arc length. This ending point, which I will highlight here in orange. This ending point, right? We always start here at green. We travel along the circle a length t, and we arrive at this end point. This is called the terminal point. A terminal is an ending point or a location that you arrive at. So this is called the terminal point. Um, angles always begin at this, I, I shouldn't say always, we could rotate this however we want, right? But when we're typically graphing an angle, we start from the x-axis and then work counterclockwise if the arc length is positive. We call that the positive direction. So we say this is the positive orientation of the circle. Why? Because if you sort of like took your right hand and placed it on that circle, you curled your fingers around, your thumb would be pointing right back at you. So your fingers are now on the screen, circling in the direction that the arrow is now. Your thumb is pointing right back at you. We That's called the right hand rule. And your thumb always points in the positive direction there. So like you're, if, you, if you work with electricity and magnetism, you're going to be working with the right hand rule quite a lot. And if you give the circle the orientation counterclockwise being positive, your thumb points right back at you, and that's a positive thing, right? This, we're going to call that the positive direction. The other direction where your thumb doesn't point, that's the negative direction. That corresponds to your thumb being pointed in the other direction, and consequently your fingers wrap around in the other direction. So if you have an arc length that is positive, it just means you're going counterclockwise. If you have an arc length that is negative, that means you're going around the circle in the other direction. Okay? All right. It's the left hand, actually, right there that gives you that negative orientation. Okay. So angles then start here at the point 1, 0. 
And if they're positive, you travel that arc length around in the positive direction until you arrive at your terminal point. If they're negative, you travel around in the clockwise direction until you arrive at the end of your arc length and you arrive at your terminal point. All right. So let's talk about just a few of these very, very common arc lengths. So the first one is, what if your angle goes all the way around the circle? What is the arc length associated with going all the way around the unit circle? So it's, you know, it's, we start here. We have an arc length that is enough to bring us all the way around the unit circle. So our terminal point is right where we began. What is the length of that? The length of that is the circumference. So an arc length bringing you all the way around this, uh, the circle is equal to the circumference of the circle. What is the circumference of a unit circle? What's the circumference of any circle? It's, it's 2 pi r. So 2 pi times the radius, which is 1. So when t is 2 pi, when you have an angle that is 2 pi, that means you're going all the way around the circle. How about an angle that brings you a quarter of the way around or a half of the way around? These are also really common things to, to look at. So I'm just going to label a couple of these. So to arrive at a quarter of the way around, starting here, this is an arc length of pi over 2. If we go halfway around, traveling along that circle. Our terminal point is here at the other side. That is an arc length of pi. It's half the circumference. And if we go starting here and go three quarters of the way around, ending right here directly below the origin, well that total arc length is three fourths of the circle's total length and three fourths of two pi is exactly three pi over 2. Okay, There's all sorts of other angles that we can look at and talk about. Um, there's really, really common ones like splitting these things up into thirds. And that means that the whole circle is split into twelfths. Right? So we've got six, six thirds per half. And so we get, uh, excuse me, what did I say? I said, yeah, six thirds per half. So there's twelve thirds in total. Um, so yeah, the, we talk about all sorts of whole fractions of the unit circle. A few of these are ones that we memorize uh, in terms of trig function values, and we'll, we'll get to that. So let's think now about the terminal point, specifically its x and y coordinates, the terminal points for some of these angles. So I'll do the easy one here. What's the terminal point for an angle of 0? It's 0, 0. Right, we haven't moved anywhere. What's the terminal point for halfway around? Oh, and I already made a mistake. This is not 0, 0. That's the center. It's 1, 0. What am I thinking? What if we go halfway around? Well, remember this is the unit circle. If we go one to the right, we arrive here. If we go one to the left, we're halfway around. One to the left, with an angle of pi, an arc length of pi, we arrive at the point negative one, zero. It's not too difficult to sort of fill in the blanks here. What are these points? So this one is 0. We haven't gone left or right. 1. We've just gone straight up 1 radius. Down here, 
point is zero. I haven't gone left or right. We've just gone down one. So zero, negative one. These are four very, very common points. One that I pointed out earlier was right here. And that was root three over two, comma negative one half. And that actually corresponds to one of these angles, which is exactly 11 twelfths, excuse me, 22 twelfths. Um, 11 twelfths of 2 pi, which gives us what? That gives us 22 pi over 12, which is 11 over 6. So if we have that angle, then we are right at the terminal point, root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Um, that's something that we'll, we'll get to in a bit. OK, um, there's a couple of uh, really commonly used ones, too, uh, besides thirds. Um, there's also, um, oh, sixths, I said. There's also thirds. And there's also halves. So we'll, we'll learn about those in the future. For now, we're going to we're, we're going to get at something called the reference number. So tuck all this in your mind here. And I'm going to erase everything. And we're going to talk about something called the reference number. So one of the reasons I'm not trying to get into all these angles just yet is because When you're talking about the unit circle, there's there's seemingly a lot of things to memorize. There's all these angles around the entire circle that you can try and memorize things about, you know, the different trig functions, for instance, their values at them. But one thing that's really beneficial is to look at the structure of the unit circle and to memorize as little as possible, right? And so use knowledge of the structure, the symmetry of the circle to help you know more than what you've just memorized. Right? So put in a little bit of effort and get a lot out. Like almost like a free lunch idea here. And this first idea is that if we look at this first quadrant and then we define something called the reference number or the reference angle, I claim that if I gave you any point x, y, that you can also know, which this of course corresponds to this angle here, this arc length, I claim that you can also know about a lot of other angles on the unit circle. For example, if you have this as your arc length t, well then I claim that you know exactly the coordinates of this one, which is exactly in arc length t equal to, excuse me, pi minus t. So this arc length, which is exactly halfway around minus our little arc t, I claim that you know the coordinates of that one as well. And this one, pi plus t. And this one, negative t. Just knowing information about this one point tells you all about this one, and this one, and this one, simply because of the symmetry of the circle. Um, for example, this one has the exact same y-coordinate, but the opposite x-coordinate. This one has the exact same x and y-coordinates, but they're both negated. And this one has the same x-coordinate, but the opposite y-coordinate. So this reference angle, this reference number is kind of a key idea. So how do we define reference angle? The reference angle is the positive angle between the x-axis and your terminal point. So I'm just going to trace out any old angle on this circle. So here's the start. And we'll go around. And I'll stop right there for the first example. So I've gone t around. I have not yet hit pi over 2 yet, so I'm not even a quarter of the way. What is the reference angle? Well, the reference angle is the arc length 
between the x-axis, so this point, and this point. It's the same. The reference angle is the same here in this case. That's the first example. What if I continue along beyond pi over 2 and I end here? So now I've got t is my arc here. The reference number is going to be the distance between the x-axis, which has a nearest point here, and our terminal point. So now we're talking about this being our reference angle, our reference arc length, or reference number as your book likes to call it. In this case, it's pi minus t. We remember that this entire halfway around is pi. So if we subtract a t away from it, we get the green part that's left over. Okay. If I end up in the third quadrant down here somewhere or in the fourth quadrant down here somewhere, the reference angle is always, always, always just this length here or this length here and it's the positive of it. Why the positive? Because that, if we were to graph that reference angle, gives us an angle in the first quadrant every single time. Okay, so the reference number to give you sort of a, a uh, real word definition here, the reference number as your book calls it. Um, my my uh, learning of this in the past was angle. Um, I've also now used the word arc length, the reference arc length. These are both interpretations of what the number is. Uh, associated, so the reference number associated with an arc length, t, is the shortest distance between the unit circle, uh, excuse me, along the unit circle, Uh, between the terminal point, as I said before, and the x-axis. So I illustrated that here with several examples, and uh, so I hope that gives you a good idea of what this number is. Um, and this reference number is a positive number. So let's try and find some reference angles for some given angles. And we'll sort of we'll sort of work on it from that point now. So let me try and carefully erase some of these. You know what, it's not worth it. <laughs> Here we go. I'll just make a new circle. So here's our new circle. And I'm gonna tuck that off to the side. And here are a few angles. So the first one we'll look at is t equals pi over four. So we can ask ourselves, where is that on the unit circle? Quadrant one, two, three, or four. So we remember that up here, at the break point between quadrant one and quadrant two, we're at an angle of pi over two. Pi over four is smaller than that. So we haven't even, we haven't even gotten up there yet. In fact, it's half of that. So it's right there. So what's the nearest distance? What's the nearest point on the x-axis along the unit circle? It's like right here. That's the shortest distance. What is that distance? That's exactly the arc length of pi over 4. Okay, so the reference angle, I'll call it R. Your book uses T bar. The reference number here is the same. It's the same as our arc length because it's still in quadrant 1. Okay, how about something like this? T equals let's go with uh, negative 2 pi over 3. So this is a negative angle now, which means instead of going in the counterclockwise direction, we're going to be traveling in the clockwise direction for our angle. Now when I look at this, I disassociate the negative sign now entirely, because I know I'm going to start here and just go this way. So now I can forget about the negative sign. 
for finding this angle. And when I look at what's left, I see 2 pi over 3. I remember 2 pi is all the way around. And this is a third of 2 pi. So this is one third around the circle. What is one third around the circle? Well, if we have one here, a third is about here, two thirds is about there-ish. I'm, I'm, I'm approximating here, maybe this first one is closer to this, and this one's closer to this. I don't know. But negative two thirds pi is this arc. This one up here was pi over 4. So what is our reference angle for this new one? Well, it's going to be the shortest distance along the unit circle between the x-axis and our terminal point. Here's our terminal point. Here's the nearest point on the x-axis. I ha don't have that drawn in, but remember that's just a straight line right through the middle. So this length here. So now the question is, how do I find that number? Well, would this be, that we're trying to get a number between zero and pi over two, right? We're trying to get that number. This number, is it bigger than pi or less than pi? That's a key question. Because this, this angle here, this, this is pi or negative pi, either way. That's the nearest point on the x-axis it's closest to. This is bigger, sorry, this is smaller than negative. It's bigger than negative pi because negative pi is less than it. <laughs> but it's, in a sense, it's, it's not quite as far. It's smaller in a sense than pi, negative pi here, okay? So to find this reference angle, what we're going to do is we're gonna look at this. We're going to say r is equal to the, just the difference of these two things. But which one goes first? You know, if you're going to use absolute values, it doesn't matter. But if you're not using absolute values, it pays to use the, in this case, it pays to use the negative 2 pi over 3, actually the larger numerical value first. So that when you subtract these two, you actually get a plus pi. And this tells us that the reference angle is actually pi over 3. Which makes sense, because what do we need here? We need to go another negative pi over 3 to continue this arc all the way to the x-axis. Right? We've got 2 thirds of pi. We just need another third to get us to pi. And that's the idea of reference angle. You're just trying to complete this either forwards path to the x-axis, or you're trying to undo, if that's the shorter path, you're trying to undo your angle back to the x-axis. Okay? So the reference angle is positive because this point here we're saying is related to a point over here which has an associated arc length of pi over 3. In fact it has the exact same coordinates as that one but the signs are both changed. So these are both negative, and these are both positive. Same values, different signs. Okay. So that's how you determine uh, reference numbers. You're taking differences with pi, okay, or you're taking differences with two pi. If you've got a larger angle, you're taking differences with some multiple of pi depending on how far around the circle uh, your point is. And looking back, I don't even think that there, we talk about that yet. So that, I'm guessing, is something we're going to get at here into the next, uh, into the next unit. But um, yeah, here we go. We'll look at a few, a few common ones here. These are like the ones that everybody memorizes. That's how I'll say this. <laughs> These are 
These are the ones that every math textbook, for the most part, uh, requires you to know off the top of your head. Okay, so we're going to look at an angle of pi over 3, just like in the last example. So pi over 3 is obtained by taking pi, that's half the circle, and cutting it into thirds. Okay, so here's a third, here's another third, so we've got 1 pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, 3 thirds of a pi. Okay, so this one's pi over 2, this one's pi over 3. And again, when I label these, what I'm really labeling is the length. I'm labeling this arc length as pi over 3. Okay. So what are the coordinates there? These are actually the ones that I wrote earlier in reverse. X coordinate is 1 half, Y coordinate is root 3 over 2. Okay. So I'm going to label that like this. Okay. So if I if I knew magically that these coordinates were one half and root three over two, do what other points do I know on the unit circle? Well, it turns out any angle with a reference angle of pi over 3 has points related to this 1 half and root 3 over 2. So any point that has the same reference angle has the same coordinates plus or minus signs. So this point here which relates to 2 pi over 3 as our arc length its reference angle is the same pi over 3. And its point, the terminal point, right over here, is negative 1 half root 3 over 2. It has the exact same values actually. But the x coordinate is negated. What's the next one that has the same reference angle? Would be this point down here. The reference angle is still pi over 3. It's the nearest point on the x-axis is, is right there at an angle of pi. So the next angle is this one, which is now 4 pi over 3. We are counting here one pot, one third, two thirds, three thirds, four thirds of pi. The point, the terminal point there, has the coordinates negative one half, negative root three over two. And the last one, which is going to be five pi over three, just one third short of two pi going to have terminal point 1 half negative root 3 over 2. It's going to be right about there. And here's the reference angle. Okay, so I, I forgot to label these along the way. This one was 4 pi over 3 because this arc length is 4 pi over 3 and this one was 5 pi over 3 because this arc length is 5 pi over 3, it's pi over 3 short of 2 pi, or 6 pi over 3, which is 2 pi. Okay. All four of these angles have the exact same reference angle. R, R, R. They're all pi over 3, which means that the points, the terminal points for all four of these angles, have the exact same values with different signs according to, like what I showed you at the very beginning, just the patterns for quadrants 1, 2, 3, and 4. So this is a very, very helpful tool because now you can sort of forget about points in quadrants 2, 3, and 4. All you need to sort of tuck away in memory is the common coordinates for points in 
quadrant one. And then use this idea of reference numbers to just infer, to just determine through that symmetry of the circle, what the other points are. But it's even better than that. So let's take a look at this. There's this idea of a complementary angle, which is not something in this section, but the complementary angle is the angle that you need to add to something to get it to pi over two. So this here is the complementary arc. It completes this angle R to a pi over two arc. Okay. So if I make a new arc with that, so this is the new arc. The new arc is actually pi over six. Okay. If this, if the first one was a third of pi, then we need what do we need? We need half of that thing to get us to the rest of the way to pi over two, right? A third plus a half, a th a th sorry, a third plus a sixth is a half, right? So if we have this new angle of pi over six, what are the new coordinates of that? Well, the symmetry of this thing would say that it's actually these same numbers, but in reverse order. This point is root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. That's really nice. What you, in order to picture this, what you can kind of do is change, change these axes around. Sort of flip the circle along this, this, this line y equals x. Just rotate the whole thing. And what you would get is the exact same point, the exact same arc we've got here, but now the x and the y have been reversed. Okay, I'll leave you to scratch your head and think about that. But the symmetry of the circle lets us, for this first point we did, which was pi over three, now we can do pi over six because of the complementary nature of the two. We just flip the x and the y coordinates. Which is great because now we've, we've memorized these two common numbers, one half and root three over two, and we get all these angles for free. We get all the four that I showed you here, which have the reference angle of pi over three. And we get all of these points as well, which have the reference angle equal to pi over six. We just have to change the signs. So this, this point here in quadrant two, what are its coordinates? It's negative root three over two, comma one half. Okay, we just change the sign according to that pattern we saw for quadrants one, two, three, and four. In quadrant three, everything's negative, so we just change both signs. So negative root three over two, one half. Negative one half. In quadrant four, only the y is negative, so this is positive root three over two. This is negative one half. Okay, so now from one angle, we basically got for free another angle and from both those, we have a grand total now of eight angles that we know. Really just from knowing information about one of them and then some symmetries of the circle, just some, some thought about it. There's one that I have not discussed yet that's really, really commonly used. I'm hesitant to get there. Because my unit circle is getting really full like really full. Um, but it's it's pi over four. So if we take the circle and we split it up into fourths. So this is kind of kind of what I'm getting at here. So we look at those four points. We've essentially drawn two axes around. And but but rotated a little bit. Those points are actually kind of special because the x and the y coordinates are equal in size. Right? If you go exactly halfway through this angle, exactly halfway, then that means that the x and the y coordinates have to be equal. That's something that you learned back in geometry class when you studied the Pythagorean theorem. Right? If you go 
and you have that x equals y. And you run through the Pythagorean theorem with this knowledge. You get that x squared plus y squared is really just 2x squared. And that's equal to the hypotenuse of your triangle, or in the case of the unit circle, the radius squared, which is 1. That means that x squared is 1 half. And I'm out of space on the recording, so this means that x squared is 1 half, and I'll move this over. And if x squared is 1 half, then that means x is 1 over root 2, or the square root of 1 half. But I'm going to write it like this square root of 2 over 2, and I'll leave you to work out that the square root of 1 half is in fact this. And of course plus or minus, which of course corresponds to different points along here. Okay. These three angles, pi over 6, pi over 4 with root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, and pi over 3 they are the most commonly used angles in all pre-calculus classes in all of the world. Um, simply because <laughs> they're just easy to remember, I think. But they're, they're, they're the most question commonly asked about and, and things like that too. So you'll go quite a ways in pre-calculus classes having these three points memorized. The points associated with reference angles of pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. Okay. Um, in fact, all of this chapter on trigonometry it's going to be repetitive where you're constantly given multiples of pi over 6 or pi over 3. Just committing these two numbers in particular and this number to memory, that'll go a long ways, remembering what they're associated with. And then referencing uh, other points with reference angles, that's the next big step. But first, getting these three numbers memorized and associated with their angle. Um, that's that's the first thing. Make some flashcards, okay? Just got to get it. You got to get it down. Okay? All righty. So how do we This is the last thing. How do we find reference angles for huge angles? How do we find reference angles for huge angles? Well, essentially what you need to do is you need to boil it down to uh you need to boil it down to removing re repeats of the circle to get that angle to something within one circle. So here's here's a here's a question your your book gives twenty nine pi over six. What is that reference angle? The reference angle to this. Well, let's think about this. Okay, in terms of sixths, how far away around is the entire circle? Right, if I start here and I go all the way around one time, that's 2 pi. But in terms of sixths, what is that? That's 12 pi over 6. So this is the first idea, that you're just going to relate the denominator of your given angle with a multiple of 2 pi. Okay, sorry about the jump. I had to take a phone call there. So... We're trying to find the reference angle for 29 pi over 6, which is not simple, I don't think, because this is sixths. So we're going to think of now our unit circle as multiples of sixths, if that's OK. OK? So all the way around is 12 pi over 6, which means two ways around is 24 sixths. So here's the key idea. When you're working with huge angles like this, you want to find the nearest multiple of 2 pi and then just cut it right off of the angle. So we're going to take this and we're going to subtract. I'm going to subtract this 24 pi over 6. And what that does is essentially it, you know, there's there's something left over in our whole angle. Uh, I'll use a different angle, a different color here. There's there's a little bit left over in our angle, 29 pi over 6. And we want to find out what that is. And that is 5 pi over 6. We find that first 
by finding the nearest multiple of 2 pi. And again, it's made easier if you work in the same denominator as the angle that you're given. Okay. Now, looking at this angle, 5 pi over 6, or this arc length, I know that I have not drawn it long enough. Because that's pretty close to pi. It's 1 sixth away, isn't it? Well, an angle of pi is like this. It's halfway around the unit circle. That's pi. But we don't quite have that. We've got 5 pi over 6. It's 5 sixths of pi. Okay. So what's left over? is now a, a kind of a simple question is simple a simple thing to compute we need to get to 6 pi over 6 again working in the same denominator well we're just one short aren't we so the reference angle for this big angle is pi over 6 because if we add that to 5 pi over 6 we get to a whole multiple of pi and that is sort of the really big shortcut. What I did was find the nearest multiple of 2 pi and subtract it off. But what could I have done? I could have found the nearest multiple of just pi, subtract it off, and then take the absolute value. If I get something that is negative, I, I just forget about it. But if I get something that's positive, I don't have to forget the negative sign. I just keep it. Okay, so working in the same denominator for large angles, try and find the nearest multiple of pi. Subtract it off and take the absolute value and you'll have yourself the reference number. And that's it. That's it for section 5.1. It's quite a lot, um, but there's a lot of, a lot of uh, questions that you could be asking you know, at this point. Um, things that you may not you may not know how to do. So good luck. <laughs> uh, keep in mind this idea of reference angles. And we looked at reference angles of pi over 3, pi over 6, and pi over 4. And we looked at those points in the first quadrant. And then I talked about how the, the, the x and y coordinates remain the same in another quadrant, just with some minor changes with negative signs. Uh, the reference or the points are remaining the same if the reference angle is the same. So, so some key things from this section are just to compute that reference angle, and see if it's the same as any one of these angles, and if it is, you're in business. You know exactly the point, because hopefully you remember the coordinates for these in the first quadrant. Pi over three is one half, root three over two pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2 in both because that's where you cut the pi over 2 angle exactly in half. And my 2's are getting sloppy, sorry. And then this one is the same as this one but reversed x and y. Root 3 over 2 and 1 half. So these are the points in quadrant 1. So if you can find the reference angle for a different angle in a different quadrant, and if you find that it's the same as any one of these three, the points can be exactly the same with some maybe some negative signs in here or there. Okay, just got to figure out which quadrant it's in. And that's it. I hope that helps. Good luck on your 5.1 homework. I'll be back for another lecture on 5.2 here momentarily.